So around four years ago, uh, around this time, I got a message from a recruiter from Zalando. And she looked at my experiences, at my educational background, and she said, you know, you could make a good product manager. At that time, I was looking for a job. So I said, yeah, why not? Let's, let's, let's listen. And then we did the interview. I failed miserably because I had no clue what I was talking about. But then that's how I got exposed to product management. And then a few, few months later, I, I landed a job as a product manager. And I realized immediately that I have to nail the operational, the technic, tactical skills to be successful. Right? I realized that I have to nail the frameworks. I have to nail analytics. I have to learn how to do user research and, and evolve, like in, you know, develop my user empathy. I also realized the importance of this golden triangle of design and business and technology and being great at, at least one of them. And I also realized that it's very important to be able to talk to people, this, this soft, so-called soft skills, and be able to really understand people and communicate with them, right? And then as time was going, I realized that being great at execution is not enough to get where I wanted to get to. So something was missing because I wanted to have an impact on the profit and loss of the company. I wanted to have an impact on the strategy of the company, and I wasn't really there yet. So hi, my name is Sherzod. I'm currently leading a product uh, design and um, performance marketing team at YAS. And I was going through my notes to really understand what was it that I learned uh, in the last uh, four years uh, in my journey of becoming a product leader? And there were so many messages, and they were competing with each other. And then I just isolated five of them that I would like to share with you today. There are much more, so we can, of course, have a chat later. But I hope this just provides a bit of a food for thought for you. So one thing I realized early on was that the product way is a stoic way. So I, was, I worked in a one company, then I had a chance to work with another company. I also consulted a few companies and helped them set up their product practices, product management practices. I, I instantly saw that I was looking at the product management practice in these companies as if through a distorted glass. Because I was reading all these books, reading all these amazing articles from Silicon Valley about these product management practices and these companies doing all these sprints and design sprints and user research and being so data driven. And I could not find that anywhere in, in Germany or even in the US when I was consulting some companies in the US. So I was, I was wondering why is it that so, those books sound so amazing? And then in reality, we never get what we actually want, you know? So either it's somewhere people telling us what to do. In other places, there are no processes. Every time I go to product meetups, we always complain to each other about how our companies suck. So it's, <laughs> it's and then I realized that there are things we, we just cannot impact, we cannot change, and there are things we can change. And it's very important early on in your career to realize that Actually, no company will ever be perfect. No company will ever have perfect product management practice and culture. The, this, this idea of product-led companies is something which is like an ideal, and we have to put a lot of effort to make that happen. In, in most of the cases, we will fail, but we have to get up and still move on, okay? And by the way, since it's a health talk and my presentation is not connected to health talk whatsoever, I just realized to just sprinkle in a couple of fitness facts in between. <laughs> so, so hopefully you find them useful. And so one myth, a lot of people believe that you shouldn't work out on an empty stomach. Actually, Science says that your body burns more fat if you, if you work out on an empty stomach. Intermittent fasting is becoming very popular and working out in fasted state is very good for you. So. <laughs> moving, moving on. <laughs> so. And, Another thing I realized was that I was working on features and I was working on some products and we were releasing certain things and I always was arguing with, 
um, with marketing or sometimes with the management. At one of the companies I worked for, we did a really innovative piece of product. Actually, we thought through the business model, we did a very comprehensive user research. We wanted to disrupt how data is distributed within that market, right? But somehow, every time we wanted to scale that project, we faced a problem. So the management wasn't supporting us, the sales organization was somehow resistant. And then I realized that there is actually other priorities in place and the company is looking in a bit of a different direction and also the market landscape is a little bit different and also understanding of the market landscape by key stakeholders in the company is a little bit different. So I realized that although we are doing something great and might be the business model is amazing, but if I don't really align with the context, if I don't really understand what people are doing and what business strategy we have in the company, whether I agree with it or not, what I'm doing will not be successful. So early on I started thinking of what is the context, where are we operating, what is our business, um, what are the competitors and what are we doing and why are we doing this. Even if I disagree, I still try to understand why our management is making those decisions. You should stretch before you work out, right? This is not intuitive. <laughs> Stretching loosens your tendons and actually might make your workout a bit inefficient. So a lot of professional fitness coaches recommend you just to do the same exercise without weights and then do the exercise. So maybe that's what you can try next time. So the next, the next idea is that, the next idea is that I'm a product manager, right, in the company. Then there is a marketing, marketeers, there's salespeople, operations, HR sometimes. And then every time I was doing something, I felt like I had to defend my position. I felt like people didn't appreciate that I was a product manager. And I felt like I wasn't respected enough in the company, like something was wrong. I couldn't get my, my, my words across the teams. Then I realized that it's not about me being product manager owning the product, it's about really spreading the product thinking across the company and this way be making the entire company more product led rather than just saying we are product managers, we own the decision for the product. What product thinking means compared to being a product manager is helping other teams and your colleagues to think the way you think to really help them to understand what is hypothesis-driven product management and how we can do hypothesis-driven operations improvement. How can we do maybe user research in HR and how we can help them to improve their process and what it means to do an A-B test and what it means to do some other th stuff like frameworks, I don't know, using Kanban maybe in the operations team or in the marketing team. And when I started spreading this knowledge across the team, instead of saying, I'm a product manager, I know better, I realized that I was having more impact on the organization as well. And this was one of the practices I kept doing um, across the years. Running on a treadmill is as effective as running outside. Wait, this kind of is, um, logical, right? That there is a resistance when we run outside. So that's why if you run on a treadmill, make sure you add a bit of an incline. So spend more time thinking than others. This one might seem a bit silly and simple, but Something I realized when I was working with one really genius engineer um, at one of the companies is that every time we had to solve a problem, he would walk away, I would walk away, the next day we would come in, I would come in with some ideas, he would come in with his ideas, but his ideas always won. His ideas were always better, but he was an engineer, he was, he was supposed to focus on how, but somehow his, even his what ideas were always better. And I was wondering why his ideas are always better. What does he do that he just has better ideas? Am I stupid or maybe he's smarter? And when I asked him, his, his answer was very simple. He said, Sherzod, I just go to, I just go home and I do nothing. I just sit down and think for one hour or two hours. I just do nothing. And this was such a revelation to me because I'm always doing something. I'm always like on my phone. I'm always reading some articles. I'm always doing research, trying to understand the great idea. But he said great ideas are inside. So these insights come from just sitting and doing nothing and thinking. I followed his advice. And to this date, I spend a lot of time doing nothing and thinking. And I think some of my, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, guys, because you have all these notifications, you have all these all this applications, all these articles. It's not easy. So I recommend you to start doing that. And it, it does help to generate insights, which, which, are, which come only after your initial um, insights. So 
crunches are the best moves for your core. <laughs> to really make your waistline slimmer, it's better doing some compound, full body uh, exercises, even if you focus on your abs, okay? So just my piece of advice. So, and the final piece of thought I would like to leave you with is that business thinking, if you really want to have an impact as a product leader, business thinking is critical for you. Yes, we have to understand technology. Yes, we have to understand design. Yes, we have to understand how to build beautiful uh, applications and beautiful products. But in the end, you want to deliver customer value sustainably. And the only way we can actually sustainably deliver customer value is to align what we are doing with the business model we, we are doing, with really understanding how our product is affecting the bottom line, and really aligning with, those, with, 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 the, with the business strategy, with the company strategy, and with those interests and unless you do that it will be very hard for you to be effective product leader you might be great at product execution still you might really focus and be excellent and, and delivering products but really understanding how your product can evolve and how your product can be at the heart of your company's growth and strategy it, it, is, it is impossible to become product leader so that's why this is something I also encourage you to embrace and the final myth we would like to bust today is that you need to work out at least an hour to see results. A lot of people spend a lot of time in gyms. And research shows that shower, uh, shorter workout bursts are actually much more effective. So uh, those were my pieces of advice and some thoughts for you. So let's stay in touch. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much. I hope you have some questions. We can also just sit and think. Oh, no, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> so you've just shared a lot of lessons with us, and you say you've learned them all within four years. What was your, you know, what did you start with? What was like your priority? Where did you feel that yeah. you needed to start in order to get ahead? Yeah, maybe I was a little bit tricky there because before I, st I started working at a very early stage because of certain circumstances in life. So I started working at the age of 12. So by the time I became product manager, I also had 15 years of doing a lot of things. So maybe you read it on my little intro uh, to, the, to the meetup. So by, by, by how, I, how I learned was that I was trying to hop on any project opportunity or anything inside companies which I could work on. I tried to stay close to the business function as much as possible. And then um, beyond my job, I always try to either have a mentor or coach someone. I, when coaching people, when mentoring people, um, it helps you to crystallize your thinking as well. So that's what helped me um, as well. And I always, always have a pet project on the side. I, and I only hire people who have pet projects on the side. So, and this is also some, something helped me like also boost my learning. So these were some of the things I did. And of course, reading, right? Reading helps, but as I said, reading cannot be directly applied, but it's just one of the sources of the ideas. Okay. Hi, I'm Nico. Um, what is your experience working together with a CEO? Um, so more specific, maybe how do you align um, your goals, so in terms of the product with maybe the CEOs? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because a lot of CEOs are very business and very sales oriented. And especially nowadays when a lot of companies are trying to establish product practice, they also don't understand um, what product management is about or what product strategy is, right? So that's why it takes, it takes a lot of Patience, first of all, <laughs> but also you have to do a bit of a, a cross coaching as well, right? You have to understand what drives the CEO. The main, the main goal of the CEO is to make sure there is a supply of money, there's a cash flow because he needs to or she needs to pay the salaries, but also to make sure the company grows. And also, the CEO works a lot with investors who usually pressure a lot as well, right? If you understand that, it just becomes easier because as long as you express this, you, you make CEO feel that you understand their pain points, and then you make a case for your product by thinking a lot, by really making your arguments sound, sound aligned with what the CEO is doing, it works. 
The most important thing is also to attend the calls and meetings with the CEO because you want to really be in the shoes of the CEO as well a little bit, right? And the, the thing with my approach is that I, I don't, I really love building great products, but at the same time, it's a very hard trade-off between sometimes prioritizing business needs. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit here, which is very painful because people who are only focused on product, they want to build only amazing products, right? Sometimes you have to make sacrifices, but you have to stand up. You have to know the line because if you make too many sacrifices, you will in the end ship some horrible, uh, crappy product, right? And this in this trade-off, so as long as you 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 show to the CEO that you you know when the limit is and you always when you're making trade-off you're informing and keeping the, the CEO in the loop so CEO knows what trade-offs you guys are making then then it works it, it builds trust and also it bu you build a relationship with your CEO okay maybe the last one all right one last question over there yeah okay <laughs> but quick ones hi my name is Nikhil uh, so as a product leader uh, I just wanted to know how do you keep the like the team that you work with aligned to your vision, like or or, yeah. or the roadmap, like not the CEO but but the tech right. team, right? The back end developers, the front end developers, the designers. Right. So my team, part of my team is here, so you can maybe ask them later. So I believe manager's role is not about defining what to be built, but to set up scalable processes. So this is exactly what I focus on and my team can actually confirm that. I always, the first thing I come when, I, like when, the first thing I do when I join a company, I always think of how can we build processes where communication is improved, where the flow of information is better, where product managers work with engineers very closely, not as separate functions but as, as a single unit, and then, and then by reducing this communication overhead. Once I do that, I then empower my team usually to um, take leadership and there is a concept of um, task, ma task maturity. So when I see that I need to maybe step in a little bit to just push things forward, I do it. Whenever I see that my guys are doing the, the, the job well, I step back. So maybe you can also talk to them later to really understand how it works in practice. Maybe I'm imagining it to be great, but they hate me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, hand is so high up. Only yes or no questions. <laughs> uh, that's, that's difficult. Um, uh, since you're doing side projects, and I'm actually really interested into another topic, it's a little bit out of this context, but uh, my, I'm doing my side project and a lot of people advise me not to hire a CTO, not to found a company with a CTO, but go ahead with the head of, pro head of uh, technology. So what are your thoughts about that? Should I go with the CTO or just stick to head of tech? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, head of tech. <laughs> Uh, it, it depends on your situation. If you're a first-time entrepreneur uh, and you don't have a background in technology, I highly recommend you to have a peer CTO. Thank you. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> Thanks right, so thank much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>